So I, female, always had a great relationship with my parents. I was adopted at birth and told when I was a toddler. Everything was fine until I turned teen. My parents were both in their late 30s and decided it wasn't too late and that with the advance of fertility technology in the years, they could possibly still have a biological baby. I was a bit hurt they wanted a biological child so badly, especially after years and years, and told them they should foster, but they said no, they wanted another try. A lot of their word choices hurt me. I'm now 23. They've been trying for a baby using IVF and other methods to no avail. My mother is now 46. Not trying to be ageist or anything, but it can be hard to conceive even being doting and loving to now contacting me twice a month since I moved out at 21, invited me over for dinner. I was so happy I got ready and everything and drove an hour and a half away. To my surprise, the dinner was just an excuse for my parents to ask me if I would carry one of their last chances of a baby for them and they would help me pay off my student loans. I was so offended and felt like an incubator. They barely spoke to me, and they only invited me to ask me that 10 minutes into our dinner. I left their house in tears. Sadly, my grandfather, dad's dad, passed away a week later. After the funeral, I told my grandma why I wasn't talking to my parents at the service, since we were always close, and she was so shocked at what they asked me. She told me she'd give me the money she and grandpa promised my dad, for my grandfather's insurance to pay off my loans. When my parents found out, they've been texting me, begging me to give them just a portion of the money for their treatments, and they wouldn't even need me, and they'd hire another woman, and they were sorry. I said no. They've been calling me the biggest idiot and saying I'm being greedy. Even some family members say I'm too hard by not giving them anything. I haven't even gotten the money yet and me and my grandma are being painted out as major idiots. Now that I'm getting the money, they're saying it's not about that they asked me to carry their baby. I'm just being selfish because I want to be the only child, even though that's not why. I just feel hurt that they'd ask me that, like I'm not their daughter. It's cemented that they don't see me as their daughter anymore. They're begging my grandma to give me only exactly enough for my loans and giving them the rest like they were promised. I feel bad because my mom was crying about it, and she said she regrets asking me, but I feel like she's just saying that because she didn't think my grandma would take the money back. I don't know. I'm conflicted. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She is 46. However much I guess, they got so obsessed they forgot they already had a daughter and neglected you. Now they're trying to use you as an incubator and cash cow for their shriveled up dreams. I'm so sorry that your parents have decided that you aren't the same as a biological child would be. You are enough and they suck for this. Wow, I'm curious about how they would have paid off your loans if they're crying out for money now. It sounds like something they would have backtracked on given their behavior. I'm sorry that you're going through this. Your grandma sounds like a great lady. Keep her close and mute the negativity. Their reproductive stuff is not your fault, your issue or your responsibility. Exactly. If they had the money to pay off her loans, they wouldn't need the insurance money. I could hear them saying something along the lines of, we can't afford it right now because the new baby needs so much stuff, or the new baby's gonna need that money when she or he goes off to college too, just to weasel away out of paying up when OP asks about the money. You are not a consolation prize. You are a wonderful daughter who deserves terrific parents that are ecstatic to be your parents. Family doesn't end with blood. You can't control your grandmother's actions, and you are in no way obligated to help out a set of parents that only contact you a handful of times a year to demand something so crazy. I was adopted too, and if I could share my mom with you, I absolutely would. Good luck, OP. I need some clarity, as I've had a difficult conversation with my 28 female sister, 25, about starting a family, and I worried that I said some stuff that overstepped the boundaries of our relationship. I need to know whether what I said makes me the idiot or not. This requires a bit of context, so going to put that first. My sister has been married to her husband, 29, for two years. They met while she was still in uni, and a year from when they started dating, they were engaged, and a year after this, they were married. 
A few months after they were married, they decided they wanted to move closer to family, me and our dad. So they moved from the other side of the country into a very rundown building that they've been doing up for about a year now. The real issue started once they moved here. This was a massive project that they took on together, but her husband quickly decided he didn't want to do any work. He goes to work, goes to the gym, and also plays a computer game that he has in the last year become addicted to, his words, and not anything else besides this. This means that my sister is left to do the housework, manage the majority of the building work, look after their pets, and do her own busy job. This leads us to last night, when we went to get a coffee and were driving around, and she told me that she and her husband were thinking of starting a family, as in immediately going to start trying. I asked questions about whether they were really ready, and she answered how they had worked out that he would go part-time. She would compress her hours so between them, they would work it out, etc. in the end. I asked whether she really felt her husband was ready for this commitment, stating my concerns that it would mean a massive adjustment for both of them, and he already doesn't pull his weight with sharing the load at home. She got really upset with me and said, why couldn't I just be happy for her? and that she and her husband had spoken about it and were happy and excited to start a family. I said it was good that they were excited, but ultimately, some issues would only worsen if not resolved before they had a family. She said I was overstepping our relationship by saying these things to her and was crying, so I thought it best to take her home. I called my mom afterward, who said that although my concerns were valid, pushing my opinions on my sister could ruin our relationship so, am I the idiot for voicing my concerns and not being happy for my sister, announcing she plans to start a family? Not the idiot. If she was announcing a pregnancy, that would be different. In that case, the ship has sailed already, so being happy is all you can really do. In this case, they intend to start a family. You can definitely warn her it's a bad idea. I actually don't think you went far enough. Ask her to picture being more tired and having more responsibilities than she does now, with her husband barely changing a thing. If that's what she wants, then more power to her. There is a strong possibility that she got upset because you told her things she already knew, but didn't want to believe. She may think having a baby would fix the problem she's having. Her husband would be more helpful and do more around the house because she would be pregnant. Either way, you're not the idiot. These are things people need to think about when planning kids. You weren't harsh with your words, but sometimes the truth hurts. You are the idiot. Mom is right. Just because you have an opinion and your opinion is valid doesn't mean you should voice your opinion. Your sister is an adult, and if she says they're ready, you just need to accept that, at least for the announcement. She was excited. She wants a baby. Maybe don't rain on her parade quite yet. As a sister, you can be concerned, and you should, of course, make clear you're there for her for whatever. But when someone is excitedly announcing the next step in their life, you have to pretend happiness for them at least. Then you can meet and talk about your concerns the next time. Context. I work in my own startup. Husband John works in a movie theater. We both had similar income before I started my company, but now I earn five times as much as he does. The core dynamic at home was always heavily skewed. I'm very neat and I like cooking, so I handled the lion's share of chores on top of my job. After my company started growing, John invested more in chores because he was staying at home due to movie theaters being closed. His workplace reopened a few months ago and he immediately stopped doing most chores. I've been lenient and doing more than my share since he comes home every day exhausted and complaining. After work, he does nothing but leisure, totally overlooking the fact that I manage our household on top of running my company. Sometimes I'm kind of a doormat, so I let it go because I wanted to be kind to John. Last weekend, he crossed the line. I work seven days a week. John has weekends off, and he was playing video games all day while I was working, and he came to me to ask me when lunch would be ready. I told him that I'm very busy with work and can he cook for once. He declined, then complained that it was so much easier in his grandfather's time when the homemaker didn't do anything other than her duties. I exploded. We had the biggest screaming match in our lives, 
with him calling himself the breadwinner of the household, repeatedly hiding behind the claim that he goes out to work, as opposed to me working from home, which means I'm a housewife. Huh? I steamed his claims by pointing out that I earn much more money than him. I work long hours and still do all the chores. I told him to quit his job and dedicate all of his time to chores, since he's so enamored with the simpler times of homemakers and breadwinners. Even if he became unemployed, our financial situation wouldn't change. He acted appalled. Monday, I gave him a list of chores to do, about two to three hours of chores daily. He constantly complains, and I just reply with, quit your job. I spent years doing all the chores on top of my job, but he whines at the prospect of doing just half. Tuesday night, he told me he refused to do the chores, and I couldn't force him. I shouted him down into submission, telling him that I spent our entire everyday life picking up the ball that he keeps dropping and that his choice to work an unskilled job for pocket change does not preclude him from helping me, the breadwinner, keep this household in shape. Yesterday, I locked up his PS5 in our safe and changed the combination. This is not in my nature. I'm usually polite and soft-spoken, and I feel like an idiot when I see him looking like a sad puppy and whining that he's tired. But I just snapped. I feel like I don't have a choice. If I let John do nothing and consider himself the breadwinner who deserves to come home to a clean house and warm meal through no effort of his own, I would lock myself into a life of servitude. Am I an idiot? Not the idiot. It sounds like you've been picking up his slack for a while. How dare he make claims about you being a homemaker when you're apparently bringing in the majority of the money? Working from home is work. I doubt working at the movie theater is very lucrative. Stop picking up his slack. He is disrespectful of you, your job, and everything you do for your home. Not the idiot. This isn't the 50s, and if he wants a homemaker, then he can well get a job making enough money to support one. Also, he would get educated real fast, because most women expect the man to help out with chores. I love that you locked his PS5 up, so he had to do the chores first. You are the idiot. I'm a woman. I think John is right, but I think that treating him like a child will not make the situation any better. John is not a 12-year-old who won't do his homework. He's a grown man who thinks his very successful wife should work all day, provide for his lifestyle, and be his maid and cook. Locking his PS5 will not make him change his mind or respect his wife. Drop this dude, OP. To start, I'm going to mention that I'm your typical 5'6 short guy. I hate myself. I'm openly insecure about it and have exhausted all solutions to fix the issue. I met my girlfriend six months ago and she met my family and they embraced her right away. My sister invited her to her wedding and mentioned including her in the photos. I asked my girlfriend what shoes she was going to wear and she showed me a pair of high heels that would have made her look two times taller than me. I asked if she could consider wearing sandals instead since there would be photos and I didn't want to look like a gnome standing next to her. She called me silly and brushed off my concerns, which I did not appreciate. On the wedding day, I hid her pair of high heels. She has only one set in the apartment because she moved out all the old ones after I asked her to. She tried looking for them and seemed to think something strange had happened. I started telling her to hurry up so we could get to the venue on time, and she ended up wearing flat sandals as a replacement. Everything went well, and I gave her high heels back once we got home. She was shocked when she saw me holding them. I admitted hiding them for the reasons I stated above, and she got mad at me and said that I shouldn't have done that and forced her to wear sandals that completely didn't match the dress. She kept saying I got what I wanted, but she will forever look awkward in those photos wearing those sandals. I do think she had every reason to be upset with me, but what was I supposed to do after I made my wishes clear? and she brushed them off, knowing full well how I feel about those high heels. So, am I the idiot? I really thought of it as a harmless move, and I think she might have overreacted. You are the idiot. You deal with your insecurities yourself. After being told no, you don't get to force her to do what you want. Your feelings are not more important than hers. Just because you made your wishes clear doesn't mean your wishes get granted, and you have no business deciding what she wears. I've been this girl. 
Luckily, we didn't live together, so he couldn't actually hide my shoes. I was 5'8", he was 5'7". I had to change my whole outfit once because he threw a tantrum and refused to leave until I changed into flats, but I only had one pair of shoes that matched what I was wearing. When we got there, he told everyone we were late because I took so long getting ready and couldn't decide what to wear. There's a reason he's my ex. It's not because he was shorter than me. It's because he was an abusive, controlling idiot, and the shoes were one of the first red flags that I justified away. Get therapy to deal with your insecurity instead of taking and hiding shoes. I, 28 female, am a vegetarian and have been since I was a teen. Meat disgusts me, and the idea of eating a dead animal has bothered me for a very long time, so I stopped eating meat. However, my boyfriend, 29, is not, and at the start of our relationship, we agreed, I will not cook or handle meat, and if he wants to eat it, he can cook it himself. Since we live separately, I don't buy it, but if we do end up living together, which I'm on the fence about, I don't mind buying it. Anyways, the other night, my boyfriend was visiting my place. He was incredibly drunk and was hungry, so he started asking for dinner. I asked what he wanted, and he said steak. I said I didn't want to cook meat, so he should. He got mad and started demanding it, so I shushed myself and just went along with it. However, instead of a beef steak, I made an eggplant one. When he opened the steak, he got angry and started yelling at me, asking me why is the steak yellow. I said it's made out of eggplant, and he asked for a steak, so I made one. He screamed at me. I asked for a real steak, not a stupid plant one. Make me a real one, you witch. I was so angry to the point where I made him get out of my house. He kept drunk dialing me with little apologies and how he didn't mean to scream, and he was crying in the background. These are making me wonder, am I the idiot? Not the idiot, and why are you wasting a moment of your life even thinking about this further? Someone who would react like that is not a keeper. And he got mad and started demanding it, so I shushed myself. Oh, honey, no. You don't have to shush yourself in your own house when somebody makes unreasonable demands. Not the idiot, OP. I'm a meat lover and I love steak. I will never stop eating it. But I've also dated a girl who was a vegan. I love many things, but loving a steak would never be above an actual person. I would eat whatever she would cook for me. And when I'd eat with her, I'd go out of my way to make sure I ate something with little to no meat in it. Furthermore, I'd be especially thankful that she made me food, regardless of what it was. The fact that he's demanding you make dinner while he's drunk is pretty messed up. The fact that he got so upset afterward is even worse. This is the tip of the iceberg, and it will only escalate. If he loses his crap that badly over a piece of eggplant, can you imagine how much worse it could get over something more serious? Be thankful you don't live together and make a clean break.